Hey guys, on this video I'm going to show you how to dual boot Arch Linux and Windows 10 or Windows 11 using the September 2023 ISO. Now the first thing that you need to do is of course create a space for the Arch Linux and in my case I'm just gonna add like 25 or 24 point something gigabyte by shrinking it and then I'm gonna boot into Arch Linux app. Now after booting into Arch you need to format first the 24 uh, gigabyte that we have allocated because initially it will not be seen. After typing the command lsplk as you could see we still don't have the 25 gigabyte or still cannot be recognized. So if we type in cfdisk, you can use this command cfdisk and be careful because it depends on your system. It could be sda, it could be also sdb or sdc or there's also nvme. In my case, it's only sda. And here you go. This now the 25,000 that I've allocated earlier. So I'm just going to create, uh, say... Uh, 600 megabytes for the EFI or boot and then I'm gonna allocate also 2 gigabyte of swap and then the rest I'm gonna allocate as um, what I call this for the root and then you need to select in here the type it should be EFI system and then this one's supposed to be Linux swap, and the rest will be um, the root partition. So then, typing again, lsblk. It's always LSB, lsblk, so you you will not be mistakenly formatting the other partitions. And then we need to format first the EFI so mkfs that b fat f space 32 then dev sda 5 and then also the swap slash dev sda 6 now be careful here what you're choosing because you might format a your Windows partition and on this video I'm just gonna use the ext4 because uh, you can also use the DTRFS if you want but the mounting in there is just a little bit long and complicated so if you if you know how to mount a BTRFS then you can just BTRFS Yeah, because it still contains with the previous one that I have the set. So this is just um, reusing it again. So now it's all uh, formatted. Now we need to mount. Now we need to create first. Let me just clear. So, so now we need to create first a directory. Now don't ask me because this is just what I found out. I know that it has to be only mounting on the slash mount, but it will not work, trust me. Then we need to mount the root partition, which is sda7, mount into mnt slash arch install. And then the same thing, need to create again directory for the boot, uh, sorry, slash mnt slash arch install and then slash boot and then we can mount the dev sda6 SDA and mount it to mount arch install slash boot oh sorry has to be the has to be the SDA5. Yeah, 
and then swap on if you created a swap partition swap on sta6 now typing in again lsplk as you can see that it's properly mounted the way you want it and then after it's all mounted we can now type in arch install now set it up the way one mirror since i'm in korea this configuration this is now the tricky part because they have changed if, as far as i remember they have changed the, this configuration since august or maybe july i don't know use best use a best effort default this will wipe up the entire drive so be careful with this manual it doesn't work i tried i cannot find let's say i choose this one there's no selection of the mount point here so that's a little bit useless to be honest see i cannot even choose anything other than just um, formatting it and uh, so what's left is the pre-mounted configuration this is the reason why we mounted it earlier and then it will ask you the mount directory since we mounted it to slash arch install and then as again i would like to say i tried the slash that mount only it doesn't work the script will just stop this encryption of course it's it depending on to you bootloader this is again the bugs that i have found out i have reported it already to the github and i'm gonna link i'm gonna leave it the link on the description for the github grab and efi stuff if you choose these two the script will just stop lemine or limin i don't know how you pronounce it but limine it will install however the problem is system cannot find it or at least on my experience maybe in the real hardware no i don't know and what's left is the system d boot however there's still also again a small bug which we can easily fix but this for now this is the one which uh, it works at least hostname it's up to you i'm just going to leave it as uh, arch linux root password if you want to put a root password for me i don't need it and but however the user that i needed to create should be on the sudoer because i want to disable the root password so i need at least one sudoer profile you can choose whatever profile you want and for the purpose of this i'm just going to choose hyperland and then the graphics driver since i'm using a kimo kvm i'm just going to use the uh, vmware and then i'm leave the sddm audio server again based from a previous or latest video of the hyperland i've tried this if i choose a pipe wire here as my audio server i will have an issue but we can add the pipe wire stuff later on so for now it's new no audio server kernels kernels uh, whatever you want let's just use um, lts or zen and then additional packages again like i said since we didn't add the audio server we can install or add in the pipe wire wire plumber pipe wire audio pipe wire pulse pipe wire alsa sof firmware firmware and then if you want also a 32 bit need to add in the clip 32 pipe wire is for games mostly network configuration use network manager it's so easy time zone depending on your time zone for me i'm in korea automatic i leave that and since we have added the lib32 pipe earlier i need to enable the additional repositories multi-lib repository and then you can install now after you install don't just reboot hang on because there are also things you needed to do now now depending on your internet speed or depending on your system 
this might take some few minutes, five, 10 minutes, could be also 30 minutes. So just be patient and let it, let it install by itself. Now, if you come to that, to this point, need to ch root the system. Otherwise I told you again, at the time of my recording at this now, September 17, at the time of this recording, um, there's an error and it will not boot actually. So I need to see it should, we need to fix that first because I will show you later on. And at this point you need a pen or even your phone because we need a UUID. So change to slash boot ls cd change directory to loader and then ls again change directory to entries le ls then we need to edit both of this now we can use first the beam or nano if you prefer 2023 just type just press the tab linux then that comp now this is the issue here options root part uuid is equal to none now we need the uuid of our root partition exit first we can check the fs F, fs tab now the root partition or the uuid that you need to copy is the one with slash this is stating that it's the root partition so i'm just gonna grab my camera and or you can use the blk id however this is a little bit confusing so you can see in here sda7 is over there but look they are both same and this is the one that we have mounted the root partition again like i said this is the issue so again uh, edit the vim linux then that cnf now once you to edit this you need to remove the part and then also remove the none and then type in the uuid So once you type in the UID, do the same for the um, fallback. Okay, now it's saved. Again, I would like to say that this is only for September 2023 ISO at the time of my recording. It could have been already fixed. Who knows? Who knows? Um, who knows if it's already fixed, but I'm gonna leave the GitHub issues that I have submitted on the GitHub. You can just uh, check, verify that one after a few days from the time of this posting. So that maybe you don't have to do this anymore. Grab can maybe also be using, useful. Now, while you're here, we might as well just add the Windows uh, partition so you should be able to boot it from there Now we need to change directory first and then we need to create a mount point for the windows we can copy the EFI entries LSPLK is mostly these hundred megabytes for windows so I need to mount that one, SDA1. Oh, what happened there? Uh, Win 10. And then change directory to that one so we can investigate. Change directory again. LS. Now we need to copy this Microsoft directory into our boot EFI. So CPR Microsoft or just type in the whole one. 
win 10 whole path um, slash this is now EFI slash Microsoft copy to slash boot slash EFI CD again so LS uh, CD there you go now it copies in there so after that you can exit and then reboot but for me since I'm on uh, Kimo KVM I need to remove first the ISO so there you go it's already in here so type in the going in there then there's no issue again like I said this is only for now I don't know if they will fix it who knows if they will fix it or not anyway I hope you like the uh, video and I hope this is useful for you as you can see that there is an issue on the Hyperland because it, I'm using it in a Kimo KVM let me just try it on the windows there you go it boot just fine anyway I hope this is useful if you have any question drop a comment you can also join in my discord um, may, it's, it's a lot easier to discuss on discord I hope this is useful for you guys and see you again in the future take care now bye bye